I have been in the military since 1997. I joined after college, went Ranger and infantry, and went SF after that. Seeing such unnatural events in life, I don't think you can completely heal from traumas of, of that nature. You can do your best to keep your head above water. Shortly after Travis and I got married, he expressed an interest in going into the dog team at Special Forces. And it was kind of this new team that they were developing. He went through all the dog training and he got assigned bear. And so what they went through overseas and going to war together, I don't even know how to explain it really. Um, it's just a very unique bond. He was every bit of war hero, you know? Like he was everything that a Green Beret needed to be. He had a huge impact on my life. He had a huge impact on my family's life. When I left active duty and was still deploying as a contractor, it was kind of a dark time, you know? Luckily, you know, through the chain of command, they let me retire him. You know, he just wouldn't work for anybody else. I think it was probably the best thing for Travis. When he was deploying and he had Bear to come home to, it seemed like the transitions were much easier. Um, and he had Bear, so Bear was his dog, and they would go out and do things and kept him very active. He could help him handle crowds and not be a short-tempered. To have this dog who was the best attack dog overseas, the best offensive, defensive, bomb-finding, tracking dog we had, who changed his whole demeanor when he moved into my home with me and became like there for us as a family. That's what I want now for veterans. Second Chance Canine, we started it to honor him. Just hang out right there so he doesn't. The dogs that I find, they were either abused, neglected, and I teach them how to work for a veteran. I find a guy, you know, from my community that's hurting or, or whatever that, that guy's issues are, and I pair those two up. Our community is very team oriented and it's, we're very tight. So by placing a dog with some of these guys, what we're doing is we're creating a, a small team. We're creating this situation where this veteran has to be the leader and he has to step up. And so, you know, it put these guys back in the team environment. The soft community deploys with Belgian Malinois, German Shepherds, and Dutch Shepherds. And so I work with those dogs because I know them really well. This is us, you know, this is Second Chance Canine. Um, it's in our home. This is where we keep the rescues, you know. Uh, we, we do bring the rescues into our home, but we can only do so many at a time. So we have in the yard right now, we, well, we have seven dogs at the house today and we're pretty maxed. And we're kind of a constant flow. We try to put them with their forever homes as fast as possible. We make sure they're really solid on their behavior. We put some really good obedience into them. And then we try to get them to the home that's gonna be their home forever. Donations help us do this. We have goals to get to a facility, but right now, you know, it's gonna take a few years to get to that point. The first thing I would do is I would build a shelter over my kennels. We're in Tennessee. Uh, our, our summer times it, are brutal. And so I want to build like a, like a pole structure that we can put power and water to so that the dogs have an extra layer of protection from the, from the environment. The next thing that I would want to do is I want to build a second chance canine office slash facility back here that I can work out of, that I can interview veterans to make sure that you know, they do qualify. We can bring them into that space and say, hey, Talk to me, what's going on? Why do you feel like you need a service dog? How can we help you to be successful? I wanna have 12 dogs being rescued at all times. 12 is significant to me because it's the number of guys on an ODA and there's a significant cost. They need food, they need shelter, vet care, they need basically therapy. Me and the volunteers that I have working with these dogs, we're putting these dogs on a, on a mental health path just like we're doing for the veterans. Individuals can help just as much as the corporations by just going to our website and, and hitting and donate. Whether it's $5 or $500, it all makes a difference. Training up a dog for six to eight months and then handing it to a guy is only the start. I develop these lifelong friendships and relationships with these guys because we constantly talk to each other. We're constantly checking on each other. We're trying to stem the suicide rate. We're trying to stem the guys feeling alone. It's all about second chances, not only for the dog, but for the veteran as well.